One of my boys, Edgar, made a comment on one of my YouTube videos not too long ago, and it really caught my eye. He said I should rebuild a team by only signing players from relegated teams, and I'm not going to lie, I love that idea. And because Edgar supports Southampton, even though after that Arsenal Invincibles rebuild, I freaking despise them. Three games now. No, not Southampton again. Today's video, we are going to be rebuilding Southampton using players from relegated teams only. Whilst I'm at it, go show my boy Edgar some love. Go subscribe to his YouTube channel. Honest to God, he is one of the hardest working people I know and he definitely deserves it. So without further ado, let's get straight into this rebuild. Now obviously nobody's been relegated so far in this rebuild because we've literally about to start it. What I'm going to do instead, I'm going to buy from teams who've been relegated from the Premier League last season in real life. So the first season, I'm allowed to to buy from Watford, Norwich and Burnley. And to begin this rebuild with Southampton, we've been given just over 28 million. Now, as I've said, I'm only allowed to buy from Burnley, Watford and Norwich for this season. I'm going to be keeping close tabs on that relegation zone. Hopefully, we aren't in it by the end of the season, but I can't see that happening with this team. They are rocking a 4-4-2 formation, which is actually kind of rare in FIFA 22. They've got a pretty decent team as well. Ward Prowse is definitely one player I want to keep for as long as possible. This guy is just an absolute machine in this game and in real life. I think the beauty about this Southampton team, majority of the players in the starting 11 already have really good potential, so it's not going to take much buy-in to actually really improve this squad. It'll just improve by itself. I think for now we are going to stick with the 4-4-2. I don't mind that formation at all with the two strikers up top, but the one thing that we desperately do need is a goalkeeper. And this is what we got up to in that transfer window. We sent out Ibrahima Diallo, Gavin Bazunu, Kyle Walker-Peters and Romeo Lavia all out on loan. We also sold Mohamed Al Yanusi for 6.1 million. On top of that, we stole Nick Pope from Burnley for just under 19 million. And for whatever reason, it wouldn't show up on the transfer history, but we did sign Christos Solis for just over 5 million too. And this is how the current starting 11 looks going into our very first season of this rebuild with the Saints. And it looks pretty damn decent as well. I completely forgot to tell you guys, at the start of this rebuild, I added all the players that have been transferred to Southampton, all the players transferred out from Southampton. So for example, we've got the likes of Ariba in the starting 11 and Romeo Lavia just to name a few who I've just sent out on loan as I've just mentioned. But this team has some monsters in it. We've got the likes of Livramento, Bednarek, we've got Salisa, we've got Peraud, Gineppo, Ariba. To be fair, everybody in that team is actually ridiculously good. The only downside is Brogier isn't going to be with us for much longer because he is currently on loan to us from Chelsea. Which is why I brought Solis because I want him to be his replacement when Brogier goes back to Chelsea. But I'm fairly confident by the end of this season with the standard and quality of this starting 11 we can definitely get a top 10 finish and at the midway point this season we are currently in the top 10 ninth place at the minute with 29 points winning seven drawing eight losing five that is decent you know but in fairness i'm not too bothered about where we're finishing this time i'm more asked about the bottom three and the bottom three this time brighton leeds united and bournemouth now, I know for a fact that Brighton have a couple of good players. Leeds definitely have a few good players. And Bournemouth, there's one or two I could nab from there. But there's no saying at the end of this season that's going to be the same bottom three. I'm hoping by the end of this season, I mean, if Nottingham Forest are in the bottom three by the end of this season, there's a couple of players in that team I could definitely have in our team. But for now, I am exceptionally happy with ninth place. And ladies and gentlemen, in that transfer window, we sent out Harry Lewis, Jan Valerie, and Christian Solis all out on loan, as well as pretty much bankrupting ourselves by bringing in Ismaili Asar for 20.8 million. And this is now how the team looks after that transfer window has come to an end. Brogia has been called back by Chelsea for whatever reason. I think he played every single game for us if I'm not mistaken. But we do have Armstrong to go into. He's played 78 rated. Not bad at all. Ismaili Asar and myself have a very good track record with rebuilds. Every single time I have used this guy he's been an end game player. So hopefully we don't have to worry about replacing him in the near future. But there's massive improvements amongst the team. So who's gone up to 80 rated, Parade's gone up to 79, Gineppo 78, Ward Prowse 82, Livramento 76 rated, even Pope's gone up to 82. All I'm hoping for that the three teams that do go down this season, they do have some players that we can nab off them that would be a great addition to the side. But quite frankly, in terms of where I want us to finish, a top 10 finish would be amazing. So we have arrived at the end of this season, and in fairness, 12th place isn't bad at all. It's a very good start to the rebuild, considering we're only allowed to buy from teams who were in the bottom three and got relegated. Obviously, we bought from Burnley, Norwich and Watford this season purely because they got relegated from the Premier League in real life last season. Now, 
Who are we allowed to buy from next season is the question. We're allowed to buy from Nottingham Forest, Brentford and Bournemouth. Yeah, that one's going to be a tough one to buy from. I won't lie to you. But I suppose it's going to have to do for now. I mean, it definitely is going to have to do for now. We've literally got no other choice. We're only allowed to buy from them three teams. And at the top of the table, we've got Liverpool, Chelsea, Spurs, Arsenal, Chelsea sitting at the top of the bunch. Just what you want to see. Then you've got Manchester City finishing fifth. West Ham sixth. United seventh. Eighth place Wolves, Everton, Aston Villa. It's actually a very weird top four, that is. The fact that City are outside of the top four is actually quite bizarre. Meanwhile, it was Liverpool who won the FA Cup. Nope. I don't like this rebuild. Leverkusen won the Europa League. Chelsea won the Super Cup. And PSG won the Champions League. Stats-wise, it's definitely a season to forget. Che Adams had a fantastic season, though, in terms of growth and development. Four overall growth this season. 80 overall rated. 25 years old. 14 goals. 3 assists from 40 games. Like, like I said, the stats aren't good. Don't get me wrong. But the growth is definitely there. Gineppo! Okay, 79 rated, 5 overall growth. Again, the stats aren't that good, but we can deal with that. Will Prowse, 82 rated, 10 goals, 5 assists. We've got Armstrong, didn't grow at all, 8 goals, 4 assists. As Marley saw, 80 rated overall, 2 overall growth, 7 goals. I'm tempted to switch the formation to more of an attacking formation. Don't get me wrong, I don't really want to go to the 4-2-3-1 all the time, but we definitely need to utilise our attacking options, and I think the 4-4-2. But in fairness, this season, we've done all right. 12th in the league is definitely not a bad start to the rebuild. It's a good benchmark to work up from. So we begin season two with just under 36 million. Now, quite frankly speaking, I'm actually pretty happy with how this team's looking. Like I said at the beginning of this rebuild, majority of the players in this squad will naturally grow anyway. So adding on to this team is going to prove quite challenging, especially when we're only buying from the bottom three teams every single time. But there are a couple of players that I wouldn't mind bringing into this squad from the bottom three last season. And in that transfer window, we only did one thing, and that was signing the big man himself Christian Eriksen for 35.5 million and here's how the team looks now that that transfer window has come to a close we've switched the formation to a 4-3-3 attacking variation obviously the big man Christian Eriksen is going to be our central attacking midfielder with Ward Prowse and Aribo being our centre midfielders I haven't touched the back four because quite frankly speaking they're just improving like mad so I'm going to keep that as it is our front three and Che Adams, Saw and Gineppo are doing fantastically well I think the next position I will look to improve though is the centre midfielder position because Aribo is by a mile the weak link in this team and the worst player in this team. I know that some of you were probably saying to me convert Romeo from a CDM to a central midfielder but it will take over 150 weeks for that to happen so there's literally no point in trying. So in the next transfer window I will be scouting and see if I can find a decent centre midfielder better than Aribo to point to this starting 11. And as for where I'd like to finish this season we did fall short of the top 10 last season so this season I think is the year for us to finish in that top 10. And at the midway point Point this season we find ourselves 14th place with six wins seven draws seven losses we're definitely taking a back step to where we were this time last season obviously we still have a full half of the season to go but realistically speaking you do want a pretty decent start to the season but nevertheless let's have a look who's in the bottom three we've got Burnley Sheffield United and Norwich now there's not really many players I can think of in them three teams at the minute who could help us right now in terms of progression and growth. I wouldn't mind Brighton or Palace. They've both got pretty decent players, but right now Norwich, Sheffield United and Burnley, it's in a looking good for us. And in that transfer window, we only did one thing and we loaned out Romeo Lavia for another two years. And this is how the team was going into the second half of their season. Literally everybody, apart from Aribo, was 80 rated or above now. And the heartbreaking thing is, I couldn't find anybody from Bournemouth, Brentford or Nottingham Forest to put into this team that would be better than a Rebo. And that I think is definitely going to set us back just a little bit. I'm just kind of hoping that the rest of the squad around him can do most of the work because obviously this team right now is actually looking pretty damn decent. And I certainly think a top 10 finish isn't off the cards just yet. So we have finished this season in the top 10 which is exactly where I wanted to finish this season. I feel like we got a little bit unlucky last season but this season we have done very well finishing in the top 10. And the teams we're allowed to buy from next season are Norwich, Burnley and Sheffield United. I'm going to have to do 
some bloody research on these teams because I need to find a centre midfielder. Everywhere else is actually pretty sound. We just need another centre midfielder. And our team is actually very goddamn solid. But out of Sheffield, Burnley and Norwich, it's going to be difficult finding one that will actually get into the starting eleven. And as for the top half of the table, Liverpool finished first place, six points clear of second place Manchester United. Third place Arsenal, fourth place Man City. Villa finishing fifth place is pretty damn impressive as well. Chelsea finishing sixth. That's not what you... Where's Spurs? Spear. We finished above Spurs. You love to see it. Yeah, no. United won the Carabao Cup. Fenerbahce won the Conference League. Dortmund won the Europa League. PSG won the Super Cup. And this time it was Liverpool to win the Champions League. Stats wise, we are looking a hell of a lot better this time. As Molly saw, I told you this guy never ever misses on a rebuild that I have done. And he's done it once again. 84 rated, 4 growth in one season, 25 years old, 45 games played, 22 goals, 6 assists. That's incredible. Incredible. Che Adams has done pretty well as well. One overall growth this season, 15 goals, one assist. Gineppo, he's half decent to be fair. He's not on SARS level at all, don't get me wrong, but he's definitely decent. If I can, I want to take War Prowse to the Champions League final. Overall, guys, a top 10 finish. We've done better than we did last season. We are progressing very nicely, but very goddamn slowly at the same time. But with us only being allowed to buy players from Norwich, Burnley, and Sheffield United next season, I can see the transfer window being pretty tricky. For this season, we begin with just over 45 million and obviously as i've mentioned multiple times last season the one place i want to improve is this center midfielder role he is hoping that i can just find somebody from the bottom three teams last season to sign who would be better than a rebo once i've sorted that however i want to bring in another center back bednarat whilst he is pretty decent 27 years old 80 rated he's not getting any better anytime soon i don't think so we do need to improve him in order to progress further everywhere else if you actually take a look at the team it's actually really solid and in that transfer window we went on to sell Romeo for 12 and a half million. As well as that, we sent out Gavin Bazunu once again on a two-year loan deal. And we finally found our centre midfielder, Jacob Ramsey, came away from Sheffield United for 37.8 million. And this is now how the team looks after that transfer window has come to a close. Jacob Ramsey, 22 years old, 79 rated. He will definitely improve. Mark my words. And as I said before, now that we have sorted out that centre midfielder position, we need that centre back position sorting out now. Bednarek, fair play. He's 28 years old, 27 years old, sorry, 80 rated. He's done a good job, but now it is time to find someone a little bit better. Fingers crossed anyway that the three teams that get relegated this time have some decent quality in the side. But by the end of this season, I'd like to think we're in a position where we can qualify for Europe. This looks pretty promising. We are at the midway point this season and we are currently eighth in the league. Now, if you take a look at the top six, there's only three points between eighth place ourselves and sixth place Spurs. So literally anything could happen between now and the end of the season. Hopefully, we don't pull a Spurs and choke it. And right now, the bottom three are actually looking pretty goddamn decent. You've got the likes of West Brom, West Ham, and Newcastle United. Now, providing the players I'm thinking of haven't been transferred elsewhere, we've got a pretty decent selection of centre-backs to go from there. And in that transfer window, we once again loaned out Christos Solis, Andrew Omabamidali, and Aluda Alafumwa all out on loan. And this is how the team looks after that transfer window has come to an end. This is the team going into the second half of this season. Now, in regards to Omo Barmidali, we did buy him from Sheffield United, I do believe it was. I could be wrong on that one. We did buy him for £5 million, but he was nowhere near good enough to go into the starting eleven yet, so that's why we sent him out on loan straight away, pretty much. But quite frankly speaking, other than Bednarek, I'm actually so happy with how this team looks. I don't think, actually, realistically speaking, there's anywhere else that needs improving. Obviously, Ramsey's gone from 79 to 81 rated this season, which, in my mind, has paid back my faith and then some, because I knew that was going to happen anyway. Hopefully, by the end of this season he'd have gone up to 83 rated 84 rated maybe if I'm pushing my luck a little bit there but this team definitely has the potential to qualify for Europe this season so we have come to the end of this season unfortunately we haven't got into the top six and we pretty much remained exactly where we were this time last season we haven't progressed we haven't gone backwards we've just basically stayed exactly where we are it's not a bad thing but it's not a good thing either next season I definitely want to improve our defense I think that's where we're lacking the most and I think that will definitely make the difference between top six and top 10. And the bottom three teams that we are allowed to buy from are West Brom, West Ham and Fulham. Hopefully West Ham still have Issa Diop. He would be a perfect addition to the team. And the top half of the league looks like this. Man City this time were supreme in becoming champions of the Premier League. Chelsea finished second. Go on the boys. 
Third place, Spurs, Manchester United finished fourth. Liverpool didn't even make the top four this season. Wolves, sixth. Leicester, seventh. Eighth place, Everton. Ninth, and Arsenal finished below us. Ha, 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 ha. Love it. We did pick up some silverware, though, this time, beating Everton 3-2 to win the FA Cup final. Come on, the boys. Leicester City pulled off a mad upset, beating Man City to win the Carabao Cup. Fiorentina won the Conference League. Real Madrid won the Europa League. Dortmund won the Super Cup. And this time, Barcelona were champions of Europe. Musa Gineppo, Car Carried us this season, 30 goal contributions in 48 games, improving to 83 rated. That is pretty damn impressive, if you ask me. As Marley saw once again, this boy just never ever misses. 87 rated overall at 26 years old, 16 goals, 9 assists, 48 games. The boy just never misses, does he? Che Adams with a respectable 11 goals, 4 assists. With his overall rating now going into next season, I would love it if he could get 20 goals. James Ward-Prowse, he's still pretty consistent with his goals and assists. He got himself 6 goals, 7 assists this time. Not as good as his previous couple of seasons, but it's still pretty decent for a centre midfielder. Here's my issue. Why the hell is Christian Eriksen playing 17 games only this season when you got the likes of Jacob Ramsey? I've I've got a feeling Jacob Ramsey's been playing as a central attacking midfielder here. So to conclude, we finished ninth in the Premier League. I think we finished ninth last season as well. We pretty much stayed exactly where we were in the top 10. It's pretty respectable, but next season we want a European qualifying position. We did also win the FA Cup, which is pretty damn decent as well. Our first bit of silverware. And with us only being able to buy from Fulham, West Ham and West Brom at Jalbian, I've got high hopes for who we can bring into the squad next season. This season we begin with just over 57 million in the bank. It's very obvious where we need to improve. Obviously, Bednarak, 81 rated, 28 years old. He's been fantastic for us since day one, but it is time to maybe let him go and bring somebody even better in. And I think we have found just the person. And in that transfer window, we loaned out Jake Vokins and Nathan Teller for two years. On top of that, we sold Christian Eriksen to Inter Milan for 36.6 million. We also sold Jan Bednarek for 23.6 million. And we also sold Jan Valery for 18.9 million. But we brought in Maxence Kakare for 58.1 million. And this is how the team looks going into this season. This is the starting 11 that we are rocking with and I've got to say we have switched the formation because obviously we've sold Christian Eriksen and we brought in Kakare who's a CDM not a cam and this formation works perfectly fine in my eyes. I don't know why but on the transfer history it always misses a freaking transfer that we did. We brought in this idiot for about 30 odd million I think. It, I can't remember I'll be honest with you. But we did bring him in along with Maxence Kakare from West Ham United. They have got some bloody good players in their team. How they got relegated, I'll never know. But with this team, if we don't get top six, I do not know what will because this team, realistically speaking, obviously Issa Diop's the worst player in the team with 82 rated, but 82 rated in the Premier League isn't exactly bad at all when it's surrounded by 85 rated players and 84 rated players. That is my expectation, top six. And we did qualify for the Europa League last season. We are in Group B, joined by Fiorentina, AEK Athens and AIK. Now, I don't know how the other teams Teams, Luke, but I'm willing to bet that ours is one of the best in this entire competition. So realistically speaking, I'd love us to quite easily go through this group like a hot knife through butter. Six wins from six, 18 points. We absolutely dominated Group B in the Europa League. And let's be honest, it's nothing less than what we expected. Not only have we dominated in Europe so far, we are dominating the Premier League. Three points clear, top of the league. This is actually nuts, you know. This time last season, I swear we're only in the top 10. Now we're top of the league. In the space of one season, we've gone from a pretty average team to being the best team in England so far. Southampton, you know where to find me, that's all I'm saying. And the fact that we've done this by only signing players who've been relegated from the Premier League is actually astonishing. And in that transfer window, we bought one player, but this one player is huge. We brought Ibrahim Sanger from West Ham United for 43 million and converted him to a centre back. And with that transfer window now come to an end, this is how the team looks. And let me tell you something right now, there is not a single weak link in this starting 11. Everybody is 84, 85, 86 rated. Saw 88 rated as well. That's tremendous. I'm very confident that we're going to get top four this season. Not only that, I think we're going to win the Europa League as well. Either way, I'm not too fussed as long as we get Champions League for next season. And at the end of this season, we find ourselves in the top four. Only one point of top of the league. Liverpool actually know they'd have won anyways because of goal difference. But the fact that we're only one point off top of the league shows the improvement that we've made in just one season. Man City were fourth, United were fifth, Spurs were sixth and Arsenal were eighth. That's just, that's just incredible. Just goes to show, Chelsea, Spurs, 
Arsenal. And the bottom three this time are Leeds United, Burnley and Stoke City. Stoke City, man. Come on. Winning two all season. Are you joking? I think our best bet of finding decent players to buy would probably be Leeds United. I can't really see Burnley having any players worth buying or Stoke City for that matter, considering they only won freaking two all season. We once again won the FA Cup. That's two seasons in a row. We have won. Oh, I'm buzzing with this. I'm buzzing with this. I don't give a crap if it's only the Carabao and the FA Cup. We have done the double. We beat Everton 2-1 in the Carabao Cup final. Meanwhile, Valencia won the Conference League. Dortmund won the Europa League. Real Madrid won the Super Cup. And Man City destroyed Wolfsburg to become champions of Europe. Che Adams take a bow, son. 32 goals, 3 assists, going up to 86 rated at 28 years old. What an absolute baller this guy's become. In the big one, James Ward-Prowse 29 goals, 19 assists from the centre midfielder position. That is nothing short of sensational. I'm telling you, I'm getting to the Champions League final and he's going to be in the starting 11. Mark my words. As Marley you saw, we've come to expect it from this guy. 20 goals, 12 assists, 89 rated. What a freaking signing he's become, man. Moussa Gineppo, 16 goals, 3 assists, 61 games played, 86 rated overall. He's had a decent season. I would have liked him to get 20 goals, but it is what he says. Overall, we finished third in the league, got Champions League for next season, won the FA Cup, won the Carabao Cup, we didn't quite win the Europa League, but at the end of the day, we got what we wanted, Champions League football for next season. Now it's our time to grab this opportunity and make the most of it. Hopefully we can do it in the first season, especially with the team looking like it is now. Granted, it will be difficult finding decent players from Stoke City, Burnley and Leeds United, but I'm sure we'll be fine. So this season, we begin with a massive 123.65 million. And I'll be honest, I don't think any any of the teams that got relegated last season are going to have any players that are going to be better than the players we've got in the starting 11. So I will be buying for squad depth mainly this season. And in that transfer window, we bought Oliver Skip for 36 million. And the big one, we brought Rafinha for 85.2 million. And this is now how the team looks going into our very first season in the Champions League. And I've got to say, I'm very confident about how we can do this time. There's no weaknesses amongst the team. It's very well-rounded. It's very goddamn good. But there's no reason why we can't do very goddamn well this season in the Champions League. Even the bench is absolutely stacked as well. We're so ready for the Champions League. And in our very first time in the Champions League, we are in Group G, joined by Inter Milan, Real Batiste and Slavia Praha. Inter Milan are definitely going to be the favourites to top the group. But I'd say we've got the strength to go through to the knockout stages, even with Real Batiste as our main competition. Inter Milan went that entire group stage undefeated. Four wins, two draws, 14 points. That's decent going. But we did get to the round of 16 in the end. It wasn't Real Batiste on our toes either. It was Slavia Praha. Real Batista did not show up. 1-1, one, one, lost 5, and gained only 3 points in the entirety of the group stage. That's shocking for them. But we have made it out to the group stage alive, and we are into the round of 16. Who is our Apo? you got to be joking. PSG. Really? Like, already? You're going to give us PSG? Like, who are the Berlin and Villarreal are right there, and you decide to give us those piss pots. Meanwhile, in the Premier League, Manchester City are top of the table, but in fairness, if you actually take a look at from the first place to sixth place where we are, there's actually not many points in it. There's eight points in it, and obviously, that's only three games worth of points being dropped. And with another half of the season yet to go, a lot can happen in that time. And this is how the team is looking after that transfer window has come to a close. That was the first transfer window where we've been absolutely inactive the entire way through. Purely because, well, quite frankly, I didn't want to get rid of any plays because I love the team how it is. And secondly, we are completely and utterly broke after the first transfer window, bringing in Rafinha and Oliver Skip. Unfortunately, Che Adams is going to be injured for a couple of months. I think it actually might be one month. I'm not too sure now. I might have to check that, but I think it's one month to go and he's back into the starting 11. It's not really a consolation, but we do have Armstrong 82 rated on the bench to pick up where Che Adams was will leave off. But I think, even though we're playing against PSG, we are more than capable of beating them. Che Adams will be out for another four weeks, so if we are successful in getting past PSG and getting into the quarterfinals, we will be straight back into the starting eleven. But first, we do have to get past PSG. Mbappe, Neymar and Doku is the front three. I think Messi might be retired at this point. Considering the fact that PSG has got one of the highest budgets in this game, that midfield three is very goddamn poor for their standard. In fairness, the back four is actually 
actually decent, but the left side's far weaker than the right side. On the right side, you've got Hakimi and Marquinhos, and the left side, you've got Saliba and Thomas. I'm pretty sure our team overall is far more well-rounded and far goddamn better. So without further ado, we are going to get into this game. We are going to auto-replace the unavailable player just for this game, and we are going to win 2-0, courtesy of a brace from Saar in the 52nd and the 68th. Mbappe got the first goal in the 52nd, but literally directly after Saar equalised, and we do get a 2-1 advantage going into the second leg. Che Adams has made his way back into the starting 11 after that injury, put him out for God knows how long, but unfortunately the suspension curse has hit us once again when we don't need it the most. Perard has picked up a suspension, meaning he won't be playing in this game, but on the subs bench we do have Kyle Walker-Peters ready to fill in his boots. We are 2-1 up on aggregate. We have got the advantage, but against PSG that doesn't mean that much, especially when it's only 2-1. If it was 3-1, I'd be a lot more confident. So without further ado, can we book our place in the quarterfinals? Let's see if we can make it happen. Come on. Ward Prowse in the 60th. Gineppo in the 28th. Doku got the first goal once again for PSG in the 20th. And then it was Mbappe trying to get them back into it. But they weren't successful in doing so. And we book our place into the quarterfinals after probably beating the favourites to win the competition this season. We ain't getting the knockout stages easy, are we? First PSG and now we're up against European giants Liverpool. Their front three. Luis Diaz, Diaz. Diogo Jota and Rodrigo. That's a pretty goddamn good front three. You've got Marino, Valverde and Fabinho as their midfield three. And then Simicast, Joe Gomez. Weak side on the left side, I must admit. But the right side is ridiculous and delict. And Alexander-Arnold and Alisson in goal. Got to admit, I actually fancy my chances. I'd say ours is far more well-rounded. Our front three is definitely better than theirs. Our midfield three, judging by our overall rating, I'd actually argue our midfield three is better than their midfield three as well. The only place they'll beat us is the back foreign goalkeeper. It's going to be an interesting game, but nevertheless, we are going to get into this game and hopefully we can perform just like that. Che Adams in the 25th, Parade in the 43rd, and Gineppo getting the third goal in the 75th minute, pretty much booking our place in the semi freaking finals. 3-0 up on aggregate. Safe to say I'm extremely confident going into this game. I know that Liverpool definitely have come back from a worse position. Barcelona, just to give you an example and not to mention Istanbul. But I'm in charge this time and I'm telling you now, I am not letting our boys mess up. Oh, fucking hell, we almost did though. We did lose on the day 3-2, but overall we did enough in the first leg to counter what Liverpool have done tonight. It was 5-3 overall during the two legs of the quarterfinals and we do book our place somehow in the semi-freaking finals. So in the round of 16 we faced off against the best team in France. We faced off against arguably the best team in England in the quarterfinals and in the semi-finals we face off by a country mile the best team in Germany Bayern Munich. And if I'm being honest that team is probably the worst one out of the three I've faced in the knockout stages so far. We've definitely got a better attack. We've definitely got a better midfield. Our back four's better and our everywhere on that pitch we beat them. So without further ado we are going to get into this game and hopefully I am proven right. Yes we do. Look at this. Adams in the fourth, Rafinha in the 61st. We take a 2 0 lead going into the second leg of the semi finals against Bayern Munich. Don't get me wrong, a 2 0 lead against Bayern Munich in the semi finals is definitely comforting. However, Bayern Munich have definitely got it in them to just get like four goals if they wanted to. So, whilst it is good we've got the 2 0 caution on aggregate, we can't afford to take a foot off the gas. Otherwise, Bayern Munich will punish us and we will have to restart this whole goddamn process once again next season. And I don't fancy that to be honest. So, without further ado, can we book our place in the final? Was it ever in doubt? Was it ever in doubt? Che Adams in the 31st, Rafinha in the 63rd, and just to rub salt into the wounds of Bayern Munich, we have Ramsey getting one in the 90th, 5-0 overall on aggregate, 3-0 in the second leg. We book our place in the final in convincing fashion. And in the Champions League final on the 30th of May, 2026, it is Bayer Leverkusen versus Southampton. Bayer Leverkusen, I must admit, we have had PSG beat them. Liverpool beat them. Bayern Munich 
beat them. And now we come up against Bayer Leverkusen in the final, who arguably are the weakest out of the bunch. Hey, I'm not complaining, I'm just saying it's a little bit weird. But before we get into the game itself, we know the drill by now. We're going to see how we've done elsewhere this season. And once again, we do finish in the top four. We finished second in the league this time. We creeped up one space higher than last season, but we do fall short of top of the table by nine points. Man City took over this season. Newcastle, what if, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, okay, let's just look at this top four. Newcastle United third, fourth place Wolves, then it's Liverpool, Chelsea, Arsenal, United, and then who else is the Brighton ninth? Where's Spurs? Where Spurs finished 14th. <laughs> And the bottom three this time were West Ham, Crystal Palace and Bournemouth, just in case we are unsuccessful in winning the Champions League final. Meanwhile, this time it was Brentford to win the FA Cup. It was Everton this time to win the Carabao Cup, beating Swansea in the final. Fair play to Swansea for getting that far. Olympiacos won the Conference League. Man City, I swear these pair played in the Champions League final last season. It was Dortmund this time to win the Super Cup. Honestly, Ismail Yusor has to be my favourite winger on this game. You buy him for qu pretty cheap, like 30 million something like that. I can't remember how much I bought him for now but we bought him for less than 50 million if I'm not mistaken and he's gone up to 92 rated honestly the return on investment in this guy is ridiculous 25 goals 12 assists in 57 games Shinepo another guy 23 goals 12 assists in 56 games Jacob Ramsey from the center midfielder position 15 goals 8 assists 54 games played 89 rated at 25 years old. You know what to do if you want to centre mid. I wanted Chadams to get more goals this season. I wanted him to get like 20 odd goals, but he got himself 15 goals, 3 assists in 41 games. I can't really be mad at that. James Ward-Prowse, 31 years old, 88 rated, 8 goals, 7 assists. I told you I would get him to the Champions League final. And boys, here we are. And it is going to be quite intriguing to take a look at Leverkusen's team. They've got Calvert-Lewin up top, St. Maximum playing as a central attacker midfielder. That's not a bad shout, actually. Vert on the wing, Diaby on the wing, McGinn, Phillips. That's that's actually a pretty underrated duo. Then Duarte, Bar, Luis Felipe, Foss. Okay, that back four is actually pretty terrible. But the goalkeeper's really good in Justin Bijlow. However, out of PSG, Bayern Munich and Liverpool, Bayer Leverkusen definitely have the weakest team. But the time for talking's over. I'm ready, you're ready, the players are ready, the teams are ready. It is time to get into the game. It is Bayer Leverkusen versus Southampton, 8pm kickoff at London Stadium in the Champions League final.
Rafinha on the ball. Oh my god, this is, this could be beautiful. Oh my god, we could be in straight away here. Oh, Rafinha. Look. Look. Do you see what I mean? How easy was that, man? How easy was that? EA, please put in a difficulty higher than Ultimate next season. This is getting a little bit too easy for me. It's always the one-two on this left-hand side that the AI just can't comprehend. I annihilate them every single time using that exact same move, and they never learn. I've just thought, why does Southampton's kit right now look like hashtag United's kit? Sanger putting him as a centre-back. Jesus Christ, what a decision. What a decision. I knew I wanted him in the team. Team. I just couldn't quite picture where I was going to put him. Then I realised we need a centre back. The guy's a bit like a unit. Why not give him a go? Che Adams, Will Prowse. We're going to find. Oh, there's Molly Saw on his right foot. Oh, what a that's a good save, you know. That's a that's a spectacular save. Fair play. Found Rafinha. Rafinha. Che Adams. Rafinha again. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, Jacob. Jacob. No way. No. Oh my God. Imagine if I had gone in. Oh my god. Adams is in chase. We've got him surrounded. Can we get the can we be the first one to this? Yes, we can. Lovely stuff. Right, James Wolf Pro that's fucking shit. Celeso versus Verts. Oh my okay, Verts is just taking two of my players out there without even trying, really. Okay. I don't like where this is going. I don't like where this is going. Livramento! Lovely interception, lad. We got this ball to saw. James Ward Prowse. Can we spot? Che Adams, Che Adams is going to spot as Molly saw, as Molly saw. He's going to go all the way here. No, he isn't. He's going to pass it to Che Adams. Che Adams makes it 2 0, just like that. It's too easy. What can I say? It is just too easy. Like, obviously, I don't find it this easy all the time, but when I do, holy shit, I feel like I can score 10 without even trying. Livramento against Diaby. Livramento. Jesus, this guy is too good. James Ward Prowse. Can we spot if he can get behind there? Go on. Go on, Shay. Oh, can... we're still in pursuit. We're still in pursuit. No, we're not. Okay, that, that just fell dead on its heels. Celeso versus Vert. And Celeso is just complete. Oh, my days. Okay, Vert. I for... Oh, head on that. Head on that. Head on that. Good lad, Livramento. Jacob Ramsey is on the ball. Jacob Ramsey. Can we spot as Molly saw on the wing? Oh, my God. We're going to send this into Che. Che, on your. Why the hell? He moved a bit too quick for that ball then, didn't he? Oh no, I see where he's going. Soliso, Sanga, one of yous, get in on Vert. Oh no, 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 no. Oh no, it's in. Oh yeah, okay. Fa oh my God, get that. Oh my God, right. I don't mind conceding, but did you see what Pope just did? Like, what was he doing? I don't mind conceding. Do not get me wrong, I really don't. But when the keeper should have it, like in this situation, Fair play, I thought that was in then, like done and dusty. But what was that? Why didn't you just dive forward for it instead of going like sideways for it? I don't understand what his mentality is there. And that is the halftime whistle. We go into the halftime break. Unfortunately, 2-1 up. It should be 2-0, but it is what it is. Jacob Ramsey on the ball. He's found Ward Prowse. I really want us to concede a free kick in a dangerous area. I want Ward Prowse to get one of his patented free kick goals, man. I feel like... If we don't, it's such a wasted opportunity. Oh, boy. Diaby's through. Saliso and Parada are in pursuit. Oh, no. Oh, freaking Jesus. And just like that, by Leverkusen have equalised. It is 2-2. And that was just shocking for me. I must admit, that is entirely on me. I brought two players over when it should have realistically been Parade covering. I don't know why he was out of position. Or it might have been Livramento, actually. I'm not too sure. We need to book our ideas up now and start playing how we did at the beginning of the first half because otherwise we could be in danger of throwing this final. Oh, my God. No. DCL, get away from my goal. Get away. No. Go oh, my God. What? What? No. Oh, my God. Thank you. Oh, my God. If I'd have conceded like that, I'd have gone nuts. James Ward Prowse is on the ball. This is our chance for a counter-attack. And it's our chance to utilise Saw's pace, man. If we can get this ball... Beautiful. Rafinha... Fi Why did I do that first time? I had so much time on the ball there. Rafinha... For good, and you see that's such a... Oh, my God. It was nowhere near either. Levermento. Ward Prowse. To Che Adams. Che Adams has found Saw. Come on. Make this... Oh, look at that for a bit of play. That was beautiful link up. Livramento to Ward Prowse to Che Adams to Saw to the back of the goddamn net. 3-2 up. Less than 15 minutes to go. 
I can't see us choking this here. We're going to play it a lot more conservatively. We're not going to attack just for the sake of attacking. We're going to play it smart now. Because by Leverkusen, if they've got any sense in their bloody minds, they're going to come at us with everything they've got. And look at them already. You look at the press. Jesus Christ. What a ball. Rafinha is in. Fosu meant it. There's nowhere near him. It's three against two. There's no way, surely, that we can mess this up. We're going to go Che Adams, and that is it. That's done and dusted 4-2. It is in the Champions League final against Bayer Leverkusen. We have absolutely wiped the floor with them in this game, I must admit. And that was an absolute masterclass in counter-attacking. No panicking, sweat it across, pass it into the back of the net. We are the champions of Europe. I still find it hard to believe we've made one of the most well-rounded teams ever created on this rebuild series with nothing but transfers from relegated teams like that's just unimaginable realistically in it that's got to be it there it is we have officially completed the mission we have completed the objective we have made southampton the best team in the world only signing relegated players shout out to edgar for the suggestion mate everybody go to his channel and subscribe to him he's one of the most hard-working guys i know on youtube but if you guys did enjoy this video be sure to leave a like smash the hell out of that subscribe button make sure you turn that notification bell so you never miss a video i upload we are on our road right now to 5,000 subscribers and the like goal for today's video is as always 300 if we could hit 300 likes that would be incredible that's all from me it's been your boy good hope you guys have an amazing afternoon and until next time i'll see you later